this is my review of Rail Farm. Uh, it's going to be interesting. You're going to see this kind of video a lot where you see things that you wouldn't see in Farming Simulator, which is sort of curvy ploughed lines and soil that looks like it's really being ploughed. Doesn't that look nice? And it makes the game look extremely interesting. But looks can be deceptive, as you'll find out. Now, you've got to bear in mind that this is a full price game. It's, it's £35 downloaded from Xbox Live Store. This is the Xbox One version. So this is not a sub £15 indie game. It's a full price, uh, AAA kind of price game. So you're going to expect some quality out of it. So what do we get for his money? Well, you get one map, and you get a handful of vehicles. That shouldn't really be a problem. If the game plays good, and it all works properly, you could still have a really good farming game, even on a small map. As long as you've got a good economy, uh, a good simulation of the vehicles, a uh, good simulation of plant growth, weather... Uh, and it should look pretty, but nothing in these farming simulator games needs to run at 60 frames per second. Uh, so you're not talking like a flight simulator or a motorsport simulator, you're talking about a farming simulator where things don't really need to move that fast. So graphics should be smooth, they should be good, should be realistic, the soil should move with some physics and if there's things like tree cutting in it, the physics and things like that should be supporting it. And you should be able to see for miles as well. Uh, this game has got, uh, it's like you're in a valley, so it's got mountains all around it, so that shortens your horizon, so they've cheated a little bit on that, but if everything else works alright, it doesn't really matter. Well, the first thing I do with any simulator, or any game really, is I turn the music off, so it's straight to the menu, uh, which gave me problems immediately. I couldn't use the, the stick to alter the menus, it just wouldn't do it. It just kept changing everything but the one that I wanted it to, which was the music. So straight away, that's strange. I had to resort to using the D-pad. And then I couldn't get the aim inverted. I, I have this stick the other way to other people. It's like, like a flight simulator. Uh, I had to do that via the dashboard, you know, the control settings on the main settings on the Xbox controller. But that's just a little niggle. I don't suppose that has to be in there. I've, I got a way to get it working how I wanted. Uh, but the major problem was I did the tutorial and the game immediately crashed as soon as I'd finished it. Right back to dashboard. So I don't even have a recording of that because when you can't record to dashboard. So this is all within the first 10 minutes of being up and running. Uh, so straight away you're thinking, oh dear. So I decided that instead of just jumping in and going straight into free mode and making me on farm, I'd try the game's attempt at a career mode where you you don't own any land, you, you only own a pickup truck uh, and you have to go out doing jobs for other farmers. So I gave that a go. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work. And I mean it actually doesn't work. Some of the jobs are incredibly simple, like watering a field or putting pesticides on a field. Them sort of jobs and harvesting, they, they go really quickly and it's like you've only just started them and you've finished. There's like a gauge that you have to fill up and you get a certain amount of time and the time's extremely generous. Some of the other ones were like ploughing and seeding a field with extremely small implements. Well, I'm not used to working with small stuff. Uh, anyway, you'd get an hour to do it. This is now a real time and you'd be poodling about and you get to the last 10% and you can't get rid of the last 10% of the work bar that you've got to fill up. And eventually time just whittles down and whittles down and whittles down until you've just spent an hour and achieved nothing. And you, you fail the mission. And I thought it was just me messing about or doing it wrong. But time after time, it, I just kept failing the sowing and ploughing and cultivating missions and had to resort to just doing harvesting and simple watering so there's something horribly wrong somewhere so I decided to go back and play free play 
forget about all the missions. Uh, free play, you start with your own little farm. You've got three fields, a tractor, a little plough, a seeding machine. Uh, that's about it. Oh, and you pick up, which is absolutely useless because the map's so small, you just don't need it. So the best thing to do with that is sell it straight away for $22,000. So I decided, because I wanted to do a quick review on it and just really get into the game as fast as I could, that I was going to hire everything. So I hired the biggest tractor I could and got the most powerful tractor that I could and the biggest plough that I could. And... That was going to be the theme. I was going to get the biggest of everything. There isn't that much to choose from. There's not many vehicles in this game. Which, again, shouldn't be a problem if the game works. Uh, I would like a farming simulator to work. And also, it, it might be possible I might get a couple of things wrong in this review. Simply because I don't know how to play the game. Well, that little bit of ploughing you saw at the beginning was the very first tutorial. Uh and that was it it crashed after that and i tried it again and it didn't crash and there was no more it was just literally a plowing tutorial and then you're thrown in you want taught how to seed or anything uh which is a bit odd but i've played all the farming simulators on the xboxes so far so i've got a pretty good idea of, of how to play these games and what i expect them to be like i've obviously got to use farming simulator whatever year uh, as a benchmark to compare this to and is this better or worse than Farming Simulator of whatever year? Now this game looks looks good to start with. When you go onto a field, that you get information straight away at the top it, about its state of how it's being ploughed, how it's being cultivated, its moisture level, its feed level, which would be like nitrogen and all that sort of stuff, and even an insect infestation level. So it looks really interesting. Well, you know, interesting to farming simulator type geeks. You know, we love that sort of stuff. It's it's why you play these games. And of course, the copious amounts of stats and spreadsheets and things like that. So my first job, I decided to obviously plough. So I set off with my little plough to, to plough the field and decided that I was going to use, because I'm testing it, use the AI an AI helper like you get in Farm Simulator and what you'll find as soon as you press B the the tractor that you're in disappears and you're left standing in the middle of the field that's now empty with a spinning icon that looks like something out of a spy game hovering over the field your tractor and your plough has gone you're just standing there you have, you have to go check in the menu uh, and then you can see that you've got a worker ride and how long it's going to take. You don't get to see the tractor doing any work, it just disappears. Ooh, that's lazy. Well, I used the worker on, on two occasions, once for the, uh, on the ploughing and then once for harvesting. Now, when I did it on the harvesting, uh, it had just started raining and you're not supposed to be able to uh, harvest while it's raining. Well... The harvest had disappeared, uh, so I sped time up. Uh, the harvest appeared back on my farm. I went and back and checked. There was only there's hardly any grain at all in in the in the harvester. Uh, and then when I went back to the field in the harvester to make sure, uh, it hadn't been done properly. There were loads of there were loads of field left unploughed. Uh, sorry, un unharvested. And that had cost me, I think it was $1,500 to not have it, the job done. <laughs> uh, so I ended up doing it myself. It was, it was completely pointless. Absolutely pointless. Basically, the computer AI work had had me over for $1,500 and, and just went with my money and just left me to do the work. I mean, that's, that's fraud. It's a crime. Everybody knows that. And I, I bet by now you're actually getting a flavour for how this review is going to go. Uh, and you're going to be right. It's it's just not good. This, this game is not finished. It shouldn't be available for purchase. Uh, it, it barely works, really. Uh, 
and that's being kind to it. The the graphics engine is extremely ancient looking. The the level of detail is pathetic. Uh, there's a little bubble of detail, not quite as obvious as the one in Farming Simulator, which does the same trick. Uh, but it's there all the same, and it it does the ploughing so well, and the cultivating. But that's it. That's all it does. Uh, you can plough outside fields, but there's this mechanic in the game where you get tired. But that takes ages. I stayed up for two days, and it only went the little health bar went down to half. Uh, and when the stuff grows, you can see in this part where I'm ploughing the. It's not my field. I'm just ploughing like you do in farming simulator, and I end up planting it all up and everything. Uh, but when 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 it grows, it only grows within the boundaries of the field. So it's extremely unrealistic uh, in that respect. But you can spend a long time working these fields for very, very little return, even on the easy mode, which I played on. And selling stuff is hardly worth the effort, the, the amount of money you get, and the amount of effort you have to put in. It's just... I don't think that you're going to be able to, even on easy mode, you're probably going to go bust. But that's maybe because I bought all the expensive stuff. Well, I didn't buy it, I rented it. But the returns on your on your work are, are it's awful. And just going back to the stamina bar, you go back to your own house and you sleep for six hours. Why six hours? No idea. But when you go to sleep, what the game does is, if you've ploughed outside your field... It just resets everything, so it puts the it just puts the map back to how it how it should be, and I suspect that's why they put that tiredness thing in the game, because it didn't seem to affect me at all, even when I ran it down to like a quarter or something. The stamina had no effect on the gameplay. I mean, as it stands, this game, it, in my opinion, shouldn't even be on sale, but it, it's not worth more than ten pounds. Or fifteen pounds, even if it all works properly, it doesn't get much right. Some of the lighting effects in it are, are they're quite nice. You can see the shadows lengthening, but you see all this shimmering and just awful quality graphics. It does look at this field here; it does your eyes in. It's awful. It's really awful. Uh, that's one of the missions I was talking about doing, and you end up just driving round that field forever and that that bar never fills up and the timer just runs down so it's extra frustrating because you spend all that time messing about on a field that size with an implement so small to end up with no reward and that's actual real time as well when the game's running normally it's, it usually runs i think it's it's a faster rate even on the slow if you know what i mean you know time passes faster in the uh free mode it doesn't run at real time this is a bit of a reoccurring theme with games on this generation of consoles that are always connected to the internet is that they think they can patch things whenever they want uh, and just leave you sitting there sucking on a full price purchase that doesn't really work properly if things were different and you could get a refund which they do I think on Steam I think you can get a refund uh, I don't see why you can't have one on Xbox Live because when you pay money for goods or services that you're supposed to get something that's actually of the correct quality and that's fit for purpose etc it's one of them legal things and we're just not subject to that and if we do get to a point where we have certain rights when we download stuff which we don't seem to have uh, these companies are going to go bust very fast because People are going to buy the games and they're going to straight away get a refund when the crap like this out of the box just doesn't work. It's it's unforgivable and it's quite pathetic that we've got a newer version of the PS4 which is much more powerful and we're just coming up to the sort of like Xbox One Part 2 with the Scorpio and this kind of game uh, is getting sold at full price literally on the eve of supposedly greater things well it's things like this are going to hold back the Xbox Scorpio because 
everyone's going to whine that they can't play this that and the other on their old xbox so everything's going to be throttled back to make sure that it works the only thing you're going to get is 4k uh and that just didn't worth it but that's my opinion the gameplay should be better the games on this generation are just dumbed down pathetic uh piles of rubbish that for the most part don't seem to work so if you're looking for a, a farming simulator game of some sort I, I'd go for farming simulator 15 because that's actually better than 17 and I think if you you get it a lot cheaper you get it from Amazon or somewhere or unless it's on dashboard or PlayStation Store or some or Steam the, it's a vastly superior game to uh, to this and it's vastly superior to farming simulator 17 which was a massive backward step and the difference between Farming Simulator 15 and Farming Simulator 17 was that Farming Simu Simulator 17 was a full price AAA game price whereas the Farming Simulator 15 was one of them sort of 20 to 25 pound games and it was much better than Farming Simulator 17 it still wasn't perfect but at least it wasn't full price and it worked properly Oh, and then Farming Simulator 17, uh, they sort of hamstrung the economy. The whole point of these farming games is you do stuff in bulk quantity. Uh, the more the merrier. Uh, but Farming Simulator 17 had a financial model in it, whereby basically as soon as you started selling anything, it the bottom dropped out of the market. So if you'd got a million canolas, you'd go and you'd sell three trailer loads, and that, that million canolas weren't worth selling anymore because... <laughs> it was worthless almost uh, Farming Simulator 15 uh, did a similar thing but not, not quite as bad as Farming Simulator 17 uh, I'm sorry I'm going on about it I've done reviews on them so have a look on my, on my YouTube channel if you're interested anyway I'm sorry this is so negative uh, it's a recurring theme isn't it with these games I wish it were better but it's not it's this is going to be a total, total waste of money. If you're short on money, don't buy this. Don't even be curious, it's awful. I, I don't think they could even patch this to make it into a good game. Not at that price. The whole thing is just lazy. Uh, the gameplay is extremely awkward and obtuse. Uh, the graphics are awful. Even things like the way that the tractors drive, they don't seem to have any brakes. It's like they have almost got like that reverse throttle that you would get on a jet. <laughs> Where there's no brakes. It's like it's trying to put it in reverse and you've got this torque converter that's trying to stop you. It's, it's terrible. Really, really bad. I mean, seriously, don't buy it if you're short on money. If you're curious, obviously, just do what you want. But if you are short money, do not buy it under any circumstances. You're going to be so upset that you've wasted your money. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.